Hey everyone, in this episode we'll be taking a look at Bad Times at the El Royale. We'll be exploring the cast, the story, and the design of the fictional hotel. All that and more in episode 83 of The Realist Podcast. Welcome Team Realists, I'm Oscar, I'm Donnie, and we have our producer Ruben here as well. Hello. Hello, he shouts <laughs> from his location. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> um, and we also have a special guest today, we have my cousin Adolfo, um, who is a fan of our podcast, and he decided to join us in town, he was in town, so he's awesome. joining us. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Hi. Literally. Okay. All right. You don't have to just stick to the high. You could say something else, <laughs> right. too, if you like. <laughs> the floor is yours. Yeah, you just got to let me warm up to this, you know, and then we'll keep it going. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> we have some questions. <laughs> right. What was your favorite episode? <laughs> well, we'll ask him those questions at the end. We'll see if he has the responses. I will let him warm up. Um, but yes, thank you, everyone, for tuning into this episode. If it is your first time listening, um, we appreciate it. We are glad that you've chosen us. Hopefully, we entertain you mm-hmm. thoroughly and uh, enough to make you come back for another episode, which is will be right after this one. There's another right. one. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay close by. Yep. Let it, let it play into the next episode. It usually does. Um, and if this is your 83rd, 83rd visit or any of, from 1 to 83, uh, we still appreciate it. We appreciate all the uh, support um, that we have. We do this for for everyone that continues listening to us. Cause we do this for you guys. That's what we helps do this us. for the fans. Yes, Woo. absolutely. Without you, without you, we wouldn't be here. We <laughs> would be nothing. We literally have someone to look at. <laughs> <say that too. laughs> um, but yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, it is going to be a spoiler discussion of Bad Times at the El Royale. So hopefully um, you've seen it. If not, go see it. Come back and then listen to us. And then mm-hmm. you're gonna hear an, an, a special guest star into this episode as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're ready to go into this, right? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we're gonna go right into let's this. Jump in. Um, are you ready to to talk, or should I pass the mic first to Donnie for for quick thoughts? No, let's pass it to Donnie for quick thoughts. <laughs> there you go, Donnie. <laughs> okay, great. As he says, special guest says. Nice. What are your initial thoughts about this movie? Uh, bad times at the El Royale. I kept calling it Good Times at Ridgemont High for a little bit because you know they. Pretty similar, which I've never seen that movie, by the way. Just wanted to throw that out there. You just want to make the reference. I just want, yeah, I just want to connect the two thoughts. But um, this film, you know, honestly, it was. I'm not gonna lie, like, ah, it was pretty slow from the jump, for, at least for the first like, you know, 45 minutes, I'd say, which I was like a little disappointed by. It did start to pick up, you know, in the middle and towards the end, and I did start to get more interested into it. Um, but. I, I'm not gonna lie. I was I was dozing off a little bit at first. It's a slow start, so that was my biggest problem with it. Uh, but I mean, in terms of like the acting was good. I, the characters were interesting. Uh, you had you know kind of you know one of those you know a film where it's like you have all these different characters and they all you know kind of collectively make up this bigger picture and. It was like that, and they had they, this, you know, one scene that they kept kind of replaying. It kind of like Vantage Point, where it's like the same scene, but they're you're looking at it from a different perspective. Right. So it was kind of like doing that, which point was, of view, yeah, storytelling, yeah, which is fine. Uh, I don't know. I was getting a little. Uh, I guess I was getting a little tired somehow. And, yeah, uninterested in it. Like by the you know third time we saw it or whatever. Like I don't know. I feel like sometimes that works. That's a good like tool for storytelling and other times it can fall flat and i just felt like it maybe fell a little flat for me uh with this film so those those are my initial thoughts <laughs> not not great ones sorry <laughs> all right D, are you ready you ready for the mic yeah yeah go i'm ready so donnie i agree with you um that's great say no more just yeah <laughs> no and and definitely definitely in the beginning um it was definitely snoresville um not gonna lie i was snoozing in and out <laughs> but that's good. Yeah, that, that's a good Write one. Write that yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Uh, no, it, it was definitely slow, but, you know, uh, again, spoiler alert, but once once the agent and all that came in into play and, and, and he was discovering what was going on, I mean, 
it kind of picked up and you're like whoa what, you know what what is he what is going on he's selling more than just vacuums which i, which I thought was pretty interesting but can, can i just interject right here i don't mean to cut you off but yeah, go ahead. i do want to point out before i forget this thought that that is when it did start to get interesting mm-hmm. when we learned that john ham's character right. yep. was was an undercover agent but then it's like they killed him spoiler alert like right. i said yes. so it's like so then like that would have been such an interesting uh, a plot point to continue progressing forward with, but they killed him like prematurely. Right, but and then also, but not only that, but just the 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 thought of you know not the thought of, but just like it actually happening when they killed him was so out of left field. You were like, oh, they're not gonna kill him, you know, and then boom, there off he goes, you know, straight yeah. through the window. So that was great. That was great. All right, so my thoughts about this um but right before we get to our thoughts let me show everyone what the plot is about in case there's someone that that just tuning in to support okay um because there are a few so bad times at the el royale it's about seven strangers each with a secret to bury meet at lake tahoe's el royale a rundown hotel with the dark past over the course of one fateful night everyone will have a last shot at redemption before everything goes to hell um and this was written and directed by drew goddard um, and stars Jeff Bridges, Cynthia Ivrio, hopefully I said her last name right, Dakota Johnson, John Hamm, Chris Hemsworth, um, and Lewis Pullman. So that's our cast and crew. And my thoughts are very similar to that beginning, the the intro, the 40 minutes of it. And that's not that's too much of an intro. Uh, definitely made it feel like we we're going to watch something completely different, a little bit more of like maybe a classic story, like one of those like old school, you know, slow pace nothing no big thrill maybe to like the third act but it kind of like that classic style hollywood movie um which is not what i signed up for i was expecting it to be you know uh high energy from the beginning so that was disappointing um so i, I was part of that snoo- snooze fest snoresville <laughs> snoresville, snoresville yeah. <laughs> we just going up with different one. um but yeah so but no when it picked up i i definitely was was hooked on it i was enjoying what they were going for in terms of the story um which was kind of kind of odd in its storytelling format because it felt like this was kind of trying to develop characters and at the same time showing that there's not much story to tell because if you just put the story together you have it in like about 70 minutes versus these backstories that they try to showcase and and develop um so it was very interesting but i I feel like ultimately it was one that it's very it's very akin to cabin in the woods where it was kind of just trying to have fun with its its theme, its thriller theme in this case, uh, and kind of just lacked the the focus as the, both the the pace of the film and the showcase of the characters because the characters were portrayed by talented actors, mm-hmm. um, but they the way that they were told to do their scenes, the way that they were uh, put together, it made it seem like they were not really trying to do this movie kind of. Um, felt like it was very quick pace for them like to like a two days filming and then they bounced but yeah so those are my quick thoughts about them mm-hmm. um did you guys enjoy the uh the thrill of it though because when he does pick up there is a thriller factor to it um there is that whole sequence of you know being able to get all that oh oscar before i forget i did want to mention too that i um also this movie had a vibe of the hateful eight um, I'm sure you guys have seen that before. Didn't see it. Uh, really? No, I haven't. It's, oh, it's on my, my. list. Uh, no, it, I, it's on my list. Okay. Sorry uh, to disappoint, but... <laughs> yeah, that's very disappointing. Oscar, did you see it? I've seen it before. Okay, you. yeah. Okay, yeah, I, there you go. But no, honestly, Hateful Eight had the same drive going. Um, personally, I think Hateful Eight was a little bit better. Um, right. Definitely interesting. You're like, okay, why are these guys here? What's going on? Um, in, in the... In the Royale, I mean, it was kind of like the same vibe going on. A bunch of people meeting up at one spot. But, I, I don't know. They just had nothing in common. And they were just all there to do one thing. But somehow all ended up intervening with each other. So, yep. Just wanted to add my two cents to that. But Great. Um, <laughs> but, not but, sorry. Uh, what I, Damn, what was I going to say? I had a thought. What was I going to say? Oh, did we enjoy the thrill of it all? The thrill of the thinking of a sam smith song it's called the thrill of it all um yeah i mean 
towards the end, yeah, it got interesting, you know, with the Chris Hemsworth survives, showed up aspect. and what the who survives kind of yeah because you you yeah you know they're not all gonna make it i'm you know I, at least i did like i'm like somebody somebody's gonna die um i didn't think dakota johnson was gonna die we're just spoiling the hell out of this film right now everybody dies <laughs> everybody died nobody survives um dakota yeah so like the thrill of the thrill was great once it started to pick up and uh but it was annoying because like the characters were annoying me like because Chris Hem Chris Hemsworth, he was supposed to be this kind of like hippie like leader of this kind of cult thing, and I get what they were going for, but I just I wasn't buying it because they didn't. I feel like they could have made they could have made they could have made, made it a little more either darker or a little more twisted, like the 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 weirdest thing that happened that we saw of like the flashbacks of Dakota Johnson and her younger sister being in the cult was that he gave this weird, you know, kind of rant about play, not playing the game or whatever. And then he made these two girls like wrestle. And what, I think he promised them one of them, like the winner to stay with him for the night. But like, that was it. And I, if you're going to go with the, the theme of like, Oh, he's a cult leader. Then I need to see something more twisted, more like more, uh, I don't know, salacious or more or more disturbing or something. You know, I, I didn't I didn't get what I was what I was what I was hoping for and with I, that aspect of it. If I can add to that, um, he was not disturbing at all. I mean, this man has a great body. He was walking shirtless uh, throughout the whole movie. So and I, that I kind of annoyed me, too, because <laughs> there was it, let me just like that was just I mean, that was just the, the pool. Like that was like the grab. Like, let's, you know, he's, he has a great body. Let's just show it off because we can. Yeah. There was no reason for him to be open shirted the whole time like there was it didn't add anything to the story it didn't to me it didn't add anything there they didn't do anything for his character if anything you just saw it, it makes you i guess see that he's a a, a narcissistic you know self-absorbed kind of guy and he knows he can use his body and his sexuality to you know control these women i guess yeah, but definitely uh nothing creepy about that for sure and um yeah, yeah, it's I not like you. it's not a cult like. Yeah, it's not creepy it's not at all. It's like, like oh, this thought. Is just, it's like a shallow person, you know, like a shallow thought or. Sorry, you get a pothead vibe. Anyways, Oscar, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I agree that the threat of Crim Hemsworth character um, was not there, but I, what I really took from this was just the interesting dynamics of these different characters that meet up. Um, it's kind of just like that that standard, you know. Strangers meet up at this one location, scenario takes place, and it unravels. Um, those are always fun, because you don't always need to get the backstory for those characters. You Generally, they, they label them specifically with the title that you are familiar with. So, like, we had um, the singer, and we had, you know, well, it was t at first a priest, but then it became, you know, yeah. um, former... Um, Bank convict, robber. Yeah. yeah. And then we have the, the cult leader of that... I guess would be you can say that you have a, a caring sister and so normally what you're saying is normally there it's like an archetype that they're all playing like you're right the, you're the that you're the this you're the this which is cool but it's like either either give it to me just like that and like don't give me backstory or if you're gonna give me backstory then really it, dive into it yeah which i feel like they were like half-assing it you're and right. this reminded me too of i don't know if you guys saw the movie vacancy remember that it was kind of like the same deal like all these strangers show up different characters whatever and then one thing is kind of you know unifying them and it's like a suspenseful mystery yeah i, I didn't, I didn't see that so you got me on that one too. okay well it kind of reminded me of that but, but i mean i even, even i even thought vacancy <laughs> was more thrilling than this one but uh, i do want to mention that there were characters that i really still enjoyed um particularly the character um miles who was the concierge um and then darlene who was a singer mm -hmm. um both of them were were standout performances to me. I really feel like those were, were really great. Um, Darlene didn't have much backstory. I think she had the shortest amount. And yet, you know, I still felt like she was still able to make us interested in her and make her want to, you know, root for her to, to stay alive. Um, the only one that, that didn't really, for me, hit was John Hamm's character, um, that special agent, and the um, Jeff Bridges' character, who was, what, the robber? former mm -hmm. robber yeah um yeah i don't know I, I don't know if it was the actors that just didn't give much to the material they were given or if it wasn't much material to begin with um but it they just didn't feel like they were playing anyone special i felt like they were just 
like here to just do these roles and collect their paychecks i i I don't i don't know i felt like they just didn't bring anything dynamic to the set of the characters and you know each one having their own role so but yeah i just wanted to mention that there were still highlights despite not satisfactory backstory there was still um some good good moments from these characters still and dakota johnson that one did also didn't do for me she seemed like a a control freak more than a, a good sister just saying well, also Dakota Johnson's character. Um, if we get into it, I know the backstory. Um, I'm not going. I'm not too sure what was going on with her and her dad, um, which is why I'm sure the, the the way she is in the you know portrayed in the uh, in the movie. But um, you're right. As far as the character goes, they did seem a little rushed, and also um, the backstories were really quick. I mean, you're like, okay, this guy's here for this, and that's it. But no, I think the special agent was definitely the most interesting to me you know as soon as he walks into his hotel he takes you know supposedly he was selling vacuums takes everything off and you know he's taking all these wire taps off and you're wondering okay what the heck is this guy doing he's not really selling vacuums but um yeah i agree definitely rushed i i agree with darlene and did you have something else What's that? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I was just. I um. I sorry. Uh. So Jeff Bridges' character, he played the father, Daniel Flynn, or Daniel something. Yes. Um. We could just say the father. <laughs> we'll just call him father. Uh. I actually liked his character, and even more so towards the end, um. Because even though he was a bank robber, he was. You. I mean, he was a pretty good-hearted man. He wasn't trying to do anything other than get his money. He wasn't trying to do anything too malicious to, you know, like trying to hurt someone. He was. He did try to. I guess, po- not poison, but kind of roofied Darlene. But it's yeah. just because he didn't want to hurt her and he just wanted to get the money. And I like the sentiment that they added of him not being all the way there mentally and him having some f- form of um, dementia and him, you know, f- losing his memory. That was, that did honestly do something for me. Even at the end when, when Chris Hemsworth was like, what's your real name? And he was like trying to remember it and he, was, and he couldn't remember it. And I, and I did feel for him in that moment. I really did. Like I was... Uh, it got me. It got it got to my emotion. So I did like that character, but I do agree that um, Dakota Johnson's character, I was like, eh, didn't do much. I I think they were trying to, you know, they were trying to go for the whole like they both es- escaped like an abusive household, and then they found refuge in this, you know, what thought what they thought was a good man, but ended up being Chris Hemsworth, who was like the leader of this cult. Well, which she realized the the like bad to it. The sister right. was but her sister like, was completely brainwashed by it. Yeah. But even that, and I don't want to keep talking, focusing on that. But even that annoyed me. Like her character, Rose was her name. I didn't like her at all. Um, I mean, I do. I know that people in real life do get that brainwashed by like persuasive cult leaders or people in power. Uh, and I do get there's maybe some childhood trauma from the abuse that they were subjected to from their father. I'm assuming. Uh, but. That whole freaking thing, man. That whole how that played out and how she died. And it's like she could, I mean, I felt like she couldn't care less. Like she just wanted to be with Chris Hemsworth. And then when he died, she was like her heart was broken and she was, I I didn't like it. Yeah. And it's like, and she was, they made her to be like just so heartless and so like evil. And the only time we saw her get emotional was was when he died. Yeah. So I didn't like. Not it. a fan of Rose either, uh, not, particularly not. for for her actions after that, um, which because it, it was part of like my entire favorite moment. But I'll delve into the details afterwards. Miles, I did. Miles was, I think, the most likable for me. He was him and Darlene. I both really liked for different reasons. But Miles, he at first when he said I killed so many people, I thought I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't think it was going to be like a, he was serving time in the yeah, war. Me, yeah. I thought it was going to be like management told him to kill these people. Yeah, because he looked like such a wimp, too. And you're kind of like, well, you know, what's going on yeah. with this guy, too? So, But I'm glad that they made him like it was a, he was a sniper was pretty a much skilled, in the, in the very war. Very skilled. In the guerrilla war. Person. And uh, that was dope. And I, of course, he freaking died. Like, but That got me, too. I was like, dang. But I was, you know. He had, I think, uh, Jeff Bridges' character... Even though he really was, he was pretending to be a father, but he wasn't. But he knew that Miles was so had such a guilty conscience. So he was like, even though I'm not a priest, I'm gonna pretend that I'm a priest, and I'm gonna help you through 
you dying basically so you can be at peace with it i thought that was really sweet too i i love how the i love how it how they ended the, like with some of these characters i just feel like the, how we got there was the biggest battle for me right also him being a fake priest um that was kind of left field too i was honestly thinking oh this guy is a priest and he's just you know at the wrong place at the wrong time but no this guy was a crook uh his whole i'm i'm assuming his whole life the way they made it seem was he was uh you know robbing banks um you know but that's basically what they told us like i said it was such a quick backstory that mm -hmm. you didn't really get much from them um but yeah as far as that goes but um yeah he was he was a fake priest you know <laughs> I was I was taken back by it. Well, the the biggest connection they have to to this character also is that we got to see his brother hide the money, so we kind of saw the. It wasn't it wasn't even the the setting tone to it because at the same time not everyone was looking for the money. That would have been a different story had we known that was the case for everyone. Um, but it looks like the the hotel had its own secrets for various reasons. Um, and just retrieving the money was just one aspect, which I felt like was a waste of that moment, of that opening scene, that felt more like a a, a, a Broadway movie, like a Broadway moment, like a play in Broadway rather than like an actual mm -hmm. um, movie. But and it was a long scene. It, it was. was like it was it was like a minute and thirty seconds too long for me. <clears throat> they could have did, they could have stuck with that same scene but just shorten it. It didn't need to be that. I don't even long. think they need to include it. My I would argue they didn't need to include it just because it it. I understand it set like the there was money there, but it wasn't the. It's it, it told us why Jeff. It told us why Jeff, Father Daniel was right, there. Right, one. That's character. all it did. Right, but but we still like. What about the rest of you remove everyone? You remove else? him, and you still know that okay, he's just there to retrieve money. Whether it's there or not, it's going to be up to your you know your own conclusion as the movie progresses until you find out yes, it is real. But yeah, it was one thing that I was just like. It wasn't needed. It, it, I would understand if that was the main thing for me. If everyone there was like, "Oh, I heard there's a you know a stack of a million dollars hidden in one of the rooms," blah blah blah, and they all want to stay there because they want to retrieve it, then that would have been like, "Okay, I get why they planted that opening scene." Uh, but I, yeah, that that didn't help start it, <laughs> and then it went slow. So that was definitely uh, a little bit of a backward step. But speaking of the rooms, though, I did want to just talk about the design of El Royale. Mm -hmm. um very interesting very mm -hmm. interesting the whole half california half nevada uh i don't know how i would feel about the spying on you know that aspect of like there's a hidden window that you can see people in their rooms now, now i'm going to doubt all the hotels i go to yeah that part was very cabin in the woods like where it's like a you can look through their you know basically their mirror and see whatever but my only thing is the whole half of this hotel is in Reno, half of this hotel is in California. I just don't understand what the use for that was in this film. Like, what was the what 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 purpose did what it purpose, serve? Purpose, right? Yeah. Um, and I I don't think there really was a purpose. I think. I mean, it was interesting. It was but... interesting, yeah, no doubt. But um, yes, I'm trying to think of a reason why, or I'm trying to think of did they explain it in the movie? I know. In Nevada, you can gamble, and they had the slot machines, and you know, and and I guess back when it was you know booming and business was 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 great, you know, they kind of show it before the guy mentioned that yeah, before this place was packed, there's people gambling, and obviously you know you can do it in Nevada and and in California, I think they mentioned that you can only drink alcohol in California or serve liquor in, in California. Oh, did is that what they said? Yeah, I'm 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 trying uh, to remember. Yeah, I think that's what it was. So I mean, so that would okay. I think that's the main reason for it. I mean, that's all I can think so of. So that why it was such a a draw for people to come because you could gamble, you could drink. At this one hotel, you could do both. Again, do you remember what year it took place? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. Yeah, see, that's another thing. I don't think they really Assuming mentioned 60s. that. 60s. I mean, yeah, maybe 60s, but... Oh, yeah, but no, as far as the layout of the hotel goes, um, that was an interesting point. Also, uh, the spying um, was weird, and, and they didn't mention who management was either. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of... I was like, who's management? Why is... Who's... You know, why is... How did Miles even get there to begin with? Who is he taking orders from? And, you know, he just mentioned that they call me, I record and send the tape and that's it. And I'm not sure if it went far further than that, if he had to kill people or not. But, um, yeah, as far as it goes, whoever they call to spy on, whether it was, you know, maybe a president or a senator or someone important of high power, 
you know, he would record them and send the tape. And I that guess, would make, and that I guess that would make sense because if it was, if the, if this hotel did have these two features that like no other hotel, you know, in the world or in the country had, it would draw a lot of people to come and check it out, and probably a lot of high people in high power. So maybe the management was using that as blackmail or using that as leverage for something right. that we didn't really know about. And Miles yeah. did mention some of the stuff he did see. Um, I think he did actually say a senator, you know, beat, uh, uh, I think it was a hooker, yeah, beat her to a pulp and everything. And, and yeah, I mean, back then everything was super shady. So, and even now, but I'm, I'm you know, back then was a little bit more secretive, I guess. But, but yeah, as far as that goes, uh, you know. Right. Uh, just to confirm, it was 1959 is when it takes place. So oh, in that oh, time, you. there's like that, you know, Nixon kind of all that area frame, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I think the 1959, that's interesting. Bec- well, uh, the oh, only yeah, thing I was going to say was 10 years later, we'll be talking about first. Man. <laughs> I know, right. Um, I, the only thing I was going to say was. Because of Darlene's character, and I was thinking, like, cause segregation didn't come into play until, like, the 60s, but maybe in California, Reno area, it was different. Like, maybe that wasn't the South. Knows, so right. I was, that did cross my mind, though, because I'm like, if it's in the, you know, 60s, wouldn't, the, like, wouldn't somebody, wouldn't one of those characters have a problem with maybe Darlene staying there or something? I don't know. I thought they were going to, I thought they were going to make a reference to it. And I'm not saying I, I wish they had. I just thought that they were going to. Yeah. But it's fine that they didn't. I don't care. I, I think it would have been nice to explore the... I don't want to say the history of El Royale, but at least why it's kind of empty at this point. Um, Because it doesn't seem like it's the the location to go for for political figures or, you know, celebrities or anyone that... Because at first, the the way they talk of it made it seem like it was a place you would go, um, a popular place you would go. So I don't know why they decided to make it seem like it was a vacant place and it was kind of like an afterthought, but... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It's one of those things that kind of was like, well, if we're going to give us more history, the the hotel itself probably would have been better than the characters, the backstory of the characters. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, it was a... It was a... Jesus. Sorry, guys. I, Amateur hour. Oh, my. I, I, oh. I thought... I, I, I swear I thought I turned my volume <laughs> down on that. I don't even know what to say. I'm so embarrassed. Oh, wow. I apologize. Ignore that uh, that background noise. What you were saying? <laughs> uh, sorry, I am. Yeah, the hotel. I was just gonna say, the, yeah, the hotel was cool. Um, and, and obviously the interesting factor, which was the creepy factor of the, you know them being able to spy on everybody. And I, I and what it also said, I wish they had kind of dived more into the why, like why it was designed, like why it was set up. But obviously, I guess it's not a that wasn't the super important aspect of the film, or else they would have told it to us. But uh, yeah. Well, no, I mean, that also, it should have been a, a, an important feature to add. Um, like I said, I'm going to go back to the Hateful Eight movie, which you need to see, by the way. Um, it went into super Damn, detail. It. Jeez, yeah, I know. some time. <laughs> Tonight. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, like, they just went into detail with the characters, and you're like, oh, wow, this guy's here. You know, they didn't reveal too much, but they did end up revealing everything, which, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I wish there was more. I wish it was a little bit more detailed. Um, but as far as it goes, I mean, slow, I mean, yeah. As as and I want to just point out before I forget, um, they kept saying, you're not going to believe who's on this film. Like they had, some, Oh, that's right. They didn't even, and they didn't tell us who was on the film. I think that was part of the mystery. That was intentional. Um, well, obviously it was an intentional, well, but I mean, I'm like, saying like the, it was just that this place has, has a lot of secrets and has a lot of things that can, can really be help like useful and valuable but i think it was just like that whole like the the hotel has its secrets that if you uncover it can be you know shocking or surprising mm-hmm. also uh miles now that i think about it <clears throat> excuse me um he did mention um that to the priest you know he, when he was talking to him about bad you know i've done bad things and i've recorded this person he did mention who it was i just can't remember because he told the priest about it and even the priest went and go check it out, and he was like, "Oh, like." And again, I, I'm trying to remember who. If they mentioned it, I might have just been. If they said his name. I don't remember hearing a name. You're saying they said a name. I, I'm pretty sure Miles told him who was on the tape and what he was. Because I remember they kept saying, "Oh, you know this person." Oh, they kept saying, "Um, 
What? Who? Do, they kept saying it was a senator. A, a, I thought it was a senator. I thought he mentioned the name. They kept the, saying he's the, dead. Oh, oh like, yeah, yes, he's dead. dead. The person that was there, but then it didn't matter because it was like more the image that would have been destroyed. They kept saying, "Oh, well, he's dead already. Yeah. He's dead." So very, like, very mysterious. Yeah, and at first I was like, "Are they talking about John Hamm?" But then I was like, "No, it wouldn't be him." No, they would have revealed it if but, it was a character we had already seen. Yeah, but, so I mean, I guess they're just like, you'll never know. It's one of those uh, briefcase. <laughs> What's in the briefcase? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and they ended up uh, destroying that in the end, right? They threw, mm-hmm. it, in they the threw it in the fire. Ah. I was like, no, I want to see. <laughs> I'm going to have to dig into that, yeah. Darlene did not care. She made it clear she did not care. She didn't. And she told him. She was like, I don't care. I do I do love, uh, at the end, She her little... Uh, her little spiel towards Chris Hemsworth about how I see through you and you're just, you know. Is that is that your favorite scene? Are you segwaying into your favorite oh, scene? Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I wasn't going to I wasn't going to go there, but since we're since we're here, let's talk about it. That was one of my favorite scenes. Um if I had to choose a favorite scene, I would probably say I mean, honestly, I would probably say the whole the, the whole <laughs> The whole scene of of him arriving at the Chris Hemsworth with his band of whoever arriving at the hotel, which and, they got uh, to a lot of places without a car, which is like, oh, what's this guy doing? I was kind of thinking about that, you know, for someone being a hippie. And I feel like he got there pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, he did. As soon as she I'm like, did you guys just run later. away from like? Were you guys just staying down the block? Did and they you have came Uber to the hotel? at that time? I'm trying to I'm trying to think, but yeah, because she's like, and she told him she was like, I'm we're at the El Royale, and I'm like. Does he have GPS? Like, he just knows how to get there. Yeah, Obviously, exactly. he doesn't have GPS, but, like, he's, he got a map, like, or he just knows where it is. We got to stick to the timeline here. Let's see. <laughs> but, um, but the whole, like, the whole, uh, I'm going to, basically, we're going to gamble and see if I kill you or not. That was, uh, that, obviously, that was the most, like, climactic part of the film. One of the more climactic, you know, uh, parts of the film <laughs> Dude, the, 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 so that was one of them for me um the part was when okay you find out that the guy's a secret agent right mm-hmm. um I, I forgot his character um you find out he's a secret agent um he discovers the rooms he sees that the D- dakota johnson character was made it look like she was kidnapping a little girl and was you know gonna kill her she had her weapons laid out knife gun and he's like, you know, I got to do something about it. Then you find out, I think for after that, you find out he's a secret agent. He makes a call and he gets told not to intervene. Yeah. Which uh, he ends up intervening. And, and, and it was totally left field because, you know, he goes to the room and he's like, hey, you know, open up. Are you okay? And she's like, no, nah, I'm fine. Boom. Kicks the door down. You I know, knew he was going to kick yeah, it down Yeah, I was too. like, Ugh. and And, and, and he, you know, slaps her down. She gets, you know, knocked out. And then, you know, she wakes up with a shotgun and, and, and it was just like, oh, she's not going to kill him. She, and then it just happened. And for me, that was like, whoa, okay. She killed him. That was, that was a pretty interesting part for me. So I, yeah. I like that part. I will say to me the, the highlight of this movie was the Miles, like, breakout scene when he just, like, went on his, like, kill streak. Yeah. And knew how to handle, air, like, the guns. He was, exactly. like, just, like, calm, cool, collected. It was like it, it snapped back in in place. Um, that entire moment, even like his little backstory of like how in the what war. his reference to he's killed so many people. Because I thought it was just people in the hotel. Like he's just, you know, they were trying to escape and maybe he just had to kill them. Yeah, I really thought it was. And I was like, please don't tell me he's like freaking Norman Bates over here. Yeah, exactly. That's what the vibe right. I was getting. But then they didn't. And they yeah, said, and no, he was he's really just... skilled, very skilled. And it was like, yes, like, because, you know, he is a he's a good guy, you know. Yeah. And he just, you know, did some. Some things he was he was influenced, you know, by upper management to do things he shouldn't have done. But he was a good he was a good character, yes. you know. And you, and I knew there were I knew because of that I knew he was, he had to die. Like they were gonna kill him, right? You which, can't. Which to me, I was, was like either Darlene's gonna die or he's gonna die. They're both not gonna survive. Yeah, that was that was disappointing. But that or or fathers father. Daniel's gonna die. One of the three. One of the three, because they were all the Only likable. Two stay. They were, I know. Well, they were the three. They were the ones with the like the most likable ones. We were rooting for them, you know. Yeah. So, but they're they're like, it would have been too much of a treat for the audience if I know. all three of them got it, away and survived it, you know. It was, it was the moment he went to approach Rose that I knew she was gonna do something. Yep. And I that's what I hate. And I said you should have just killed her right on sight. 
Right. She just shot her right then and you there. Witness like her love for him. She wasn't just gonna be like, "Oh, thank you, you freed me" or anything. Like she wasn't gonna snap out of some kind of, uh, you know, brainwash. It was just yeah. It was just I I really I really liked that moment. His character was interesting. You know, for the parts that he was in, he wasn't in it too much. Like for the first uh, two thirds of it, but uh, and then he was like doing like heroin too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like drug addiction. Explore. There was. There's a lot of questions which, about which his I guess would make character. sense if he's like you know uh, a, a veteran and, and going through PTSD and guilt from killing all those people in the war. Yeah. So that would make sense. But. Also, I, I don't think he's killed anyone in the hotel, right? They just strictly tell him to record, and obviously the things that he's seen kind of you know traumatized him a little bit in the sense of like you know just the stuff that I've seen. I I shouldn't have seen them in the first place. You know what I mean? And 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 it, and it affected him throughout the movie, and that's what he kept mentioning like. You know, kept going to Father Flynn, like, hey, please forgive me. And <laughs> he's not a priest, so I, I keep thinking about it. Yeah, he's not <laughs> a priest. Oh, that moment when he found out he wasn't heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like, don't tell him. Please right, don't just tell him. him. Right. Just let him believe. Let him. Let him. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, it's time for our real score. So who wants to go first? I'll I'll, uh, I'll throw it up in the air from between one of you two. One uh, of you going to die. <laughs> no, damn. Pick I'll go red, first. Pick a color, red or black. <laughs> I'll go first. Um, if I can give this a score, I'm going to give it a solid two. Um, and I'm giving it a two just because, like I said, that that start was so slow. I should have brought my blanket and, and my pillow. And, and yeah, uh, you don't miss nothing. <laughs> also, um, if you fell asleep, yeah, you'd just be like, oh, what's going on? We, you know, but... Um, yeah, just a slow start. Uh, the you know you don't really get into the characters um, as far as like you want to like really get into them. You know, figure out like okay, why are they there? What's going on? You know, get a little bit more you know back info. But um, you know, and it was a little rushed. And then uh, just the Chris Hemsworth character was just I don't know, just weird. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling too many of the you know the characters. He was but, just annoying more than anything. Yeah, he was just <laughs> to me. Yeah, just just weird, but um, yeah, I'll give it a, I'll give it a solid two, and I'm being generous with that too. So, all right, I got you. That is my exact same score. It's gonna be a two out of five. Uh, I I felt like I was being a little too harsh, but now I don't feel that way anymore. Thank you, Adolfo. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a, I mean, a slow start. Didn't get enough backstory. Like I said, if you're gonna give me backstory, then give me some more. Give me backstory enough to to make it worth my while. Otherwise, then just keep it in the present. Uh, so I felt like they they kind of didn't uh, get me what I wanted there. Uh, the the kind of villain of this film, Chris Hemsworth, he was just like I said. I didn't get. A, he was supposed to be the leader of this cult and so per, per uh, persuasive, and and he really wasn't. He was just annoying and. Kind and irrational and kind of you know into him narcissistic and egotistical so it was like whatever didn't like it didn't buy it uh and yeah i mean you know it, it had some it had some highlights it had some good characters that we liked uh you know the set was really cool the whole aspect of the of the royale was was interesting and uh i feel like they it tried to it tried to really get into some interesting things with like you know, John Hamm really being an undercover agent, but I feel like even that was cut off so short. Like that would have been so. I really wanted to know more about him and what you know, why he was what he was there to do, and you know. But it, like I said, it was just his his character's life came to a a halt too too quickly. So uh, yeah, you know, just little little things. So with all that said, I don't want to keep rambling here, but two out of five is my final real score for this film. All right. So, I mean, I think this one was more, and I, mean, I could be completely wrong, um, I think this was more a homage to modern, I'm uh, not modern, uh, classic thrills, um, because a lot of older films do have that kind of um, slow pace in the beginning, and that, you know, the reveal doesn't really come into the very end, and, you know, whether it's a good reveal or not, it depends on the movie, uh, and the, the, the short term of these characters that sometimes play out. Uh, that's very common in the older Hollywood films. Um, not always that they they didn't always you know stay till the end. Even big name stars, most of the time, big name stars stayed until the end. But there is a few occasions where they 
you know, surprisingly didn't stay the entire movie. That's um, fine. I get that. But don't ki- don't take the most interesting character or the or the character that has the most interesting story and then kill him off right away. Because I, I, I care about him more than I care about mm-hmm. some of the other characters. And you're dragging them out till the end. I wasn't done. <laughs> but, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but no. And yeah, another so, thing. <laughs> uh, I think that that's what it was going for. And well, it missed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I it didn't land. Guy, he, he was the most interesting character. You're like, okay, what's he gonna get into? What's he doing? And boom. Anyway, sorry. Continue. On. Sorry, I'll shut up. I, I clearly, can I get to the point of the review of that point? Let's that's say, your score. Huh? I am not saying that you know this is you guys are not seeing it. I'm just saying that that's what I think it was going for, um, and I can understand that. And I, I feel like it had um, a lot of moments that were were interesting. That kind of you know. Would say I would say make it might make it worth a, a Tuesday showtime a matinee five dollars five dollars right. five dollar Tuesday um, I would say maybe that to see that movie um, but definitely not one of those like you know a must see you know if you pass along it I don't think it's actually gonna hurt in the in the long term it's gonna be like oh I missed it never got to it um, but yeah so I mean, I'm gonna be a little bit generous because I did like the the third act the you know who will survive the you know the that concluding arc that it had where, you know, every, every character had its goal. And at that point, the goal was interfered when uh, Chris Hemsworth arrived. So I'm actually going to say I'm going to give it a three out of five um, for that for that third act. I feel like the third act was was worthy enough of worthy enough of being able to see this in a theater. But um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 feel, I definitely think that there's a lot of things that fell short on it. Um, a lot of points that you guys have pointed out, but yeah, it was there was still some entertaining value that I feel like is is redeemable. It's still redeemable, and you had to me, I had I had uh, enjoyment out of two characters. So, all right, well, there it is. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully everyone uh, had a similar thought to ours. Uh, if not, definitely let us know. You know where to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Team Realist. That's Team R Double E L I S T S, no dash. I would like to thank Adolfo for stopping by and uh, reviewing this episode with yes, us. Yes, thank you so much for joining us, man. Our number one fan right here. Oh, not, that's that's. Um, I don't know how to feel about that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I look forward to doing this again with you guys. And, yeah, for uh, sure. Hopefully in the near future, you know. Um, so thank you. Absolutely. And if you feel like you are number one, <laughs> you want to be on this episode. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be someone that's gonna be like, send us um, an email as to why you think you deserve to be our number one. If fan. I'm not number one, I'm gonna stop tuning into this. <laughs> He's one of our one of our biggest fans. I mean, I won't say. Let me retract. I won't say the number one fan because we don't know who the number one fan is. Right. But this guy shows us a lot of love. It's so a mystery. It's it. just like the, the the tape. We don't know who the exactly. <laughs> but yes, um, hopefully everyone enjoyed this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Thank uh, you guys. Until next time.